So as European countries continue to protest against COVID lockdowns and harsh restrictions on the unvaccinated, a survey from Savanta Comres has found that 45% of adults support introducing similar selective lockdowns here in the UK. Well, as COVID infection rates start rising sharply in parts of Western Europe, and with what there has been, we can see that violent resistance to further restrictions. Are we likely to see similar restrictions return here? Well, Chris Hopkins is the political research director at Savanta Comres, and we're delighted you can join us to talk to us about your findings. What prompted you to ask those kind of questions to say, OK, would you be in support of saying people who haven't had the jab will we'll just have lockdown for you? I mean, beyond the fact that it's incredibly interesting, obviously, as as the leading just said, you know, these things are starting to happen across Western Europe. And I think that you know, the government uh, throughout sort of 2020, when there was, um, you know, when there was talk of a vaccine coming in, I think there was always a sense from government that, you know, obviously there was massive encouragement to take up, take up getting the jab, take up getting two and now take up getting boosters. And I think there was always a slight concern that this would lead to almost a two tiered society. We kind of appear to be almost at that crossroads now where, as I say, some European countries are starting to do something, something a little bit similar. And I think ultimately it's, it, it's interesting to get the view of the public to see whether they would be supportive or oppose uh, something similar being adopted in the UK. I mean, I, I, if push came to shove in, in a hospital A&E unit and you've, you're going to have to make a decision as to who you allow in and who, who you don't, are you going to, your, your gut is going to say, well, I'll treat people who've done their bit to help themselves, those that are vaccinated and those that aren't vaccinated, well, you, you, you are going to have to wait. I know we're not facing that as a decision now, but your, uh, your, your, your survey would suggest that that is a view that people would agree with. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting hypothetical, Simon. I guess, you know, the, the, the practicalities of, of it aren't really explored in this survey. I think what we are seeing uh, among the public is just, you know, uh, almost support for that two tier society. I think that those that have been vaccinated, if there were to, you know, if, if the UK were to suffer, um, you know, a, a COVID lockdown again, or, you know, c cases were to rise over the coming months, and um, particularly with the pressures on the NHS, I think those that have been fully vaccinated, including having a booster, I think that um, I, th I think those people will feel quite hard done by, and I think that's kind of what we're seeing in this poll. I think what we're seeing is you know, those that have been vaccinated, um, those that have essentially followed the rules, and and you know throughout uh, the pandemic, you know, the public have told us consistently that they are following the rules to the letter of the law, even though evidence does suggest that they possibly haven't quite been. But I think those that perceive themselves to be doing everything right don't want to be let down by the man, by the by the minority that they see that aren't doing things right. And I think that that's really what this poll reflects. Do you think there's been a bit of a shift? Because we know the public have actually been fairly supportive of the measures that the government have put in, even if it is fairly draconian lockdowns. Is there a shift now to say, OK, we've played our part, the people who haven't, it's over to you now. People are feeling almost a bit of blame or they feel that people are being selfish? I think so. And I think that, you know, I think there is probably an element from the public, you know, compared to this time last year, it's a little bit like, well, here we go again. You know, we don't want to be, you know, we heard so much from the government around um, sort of November, even early December 2020, that was you know, very much like, well, we're not going to have restrictions in over Christmas. You know, these are, the, these are going to be the rules. And I think, you know, I, I don't blame the public, I think, for, for feeling kind of, you know, once bitten, twice shy. Um, and ultimately, like I say, those that do follow the rules or at least have perceived themselves to be following the rules and have got their vaccinations, they don't want to be let down by that minority. They don't want to have to you know, have a second Christmas ruined um, because of those people that, that aren't vaccinated. And at the end of the day, I'm not sure how much cut through this gets, but it does seem to be relatively well, well reported and, and pretty factual that, that, that the most severe coronavirus cases are among those that aren't vaccinated. So, you know, if, 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 if those pressures on the NHS are happening, it does appear to be the those that are un, unvaccinated that are kind of letting the health service down. And I think it's absolutely fair uh, that those that have been vaccinated wouldn't want, um, you know, to, to be put at a disadvantage because of those people that have taken that choice. Yeah, which goes back to, to my earlier an analogy, doesn't it? I, the, the, the fact is, though, that things have levelled off in the, this country. If you compare us with, with what's happening in Europe, the picture here is a lot brighter. Absolutely, and this you know this question ultimately is is a hypothetical. I think that there is um, you know like I say I think that there's just when you pose the question to the public I think that there's very much like I think they have a bit of a worst case scenario kind of 
feeling. And I think that's probably you know, what kind of contributed to, to the high numbers here. And it is it is worth saying that still, you know, a significant minority, a third, did did oppose kind of what what the question proposed. So you know, it isn't as kind of cut and dry as perhaps we, we think. But ultimately, you know, almost half are kind of looking for this. Or, or would support this two-tiered society. And I think that that's fairly understandable, given what the government have said and, and the government's drive for, for getting the vaccination and now a booster as well as we head into winter. Uh, but, you know, we've heard from the health secretary said we're on plan A, we really don't want to have to go to, to plan B and we're doing things to prevent that happening. Would there be public support if, come Christmas, there had to be further restrictions? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd love to sit here and say, and say no. Um, but, you know, like I say, throughout the pandemic, all, all, all that we've ever seen from the public is that they have been really, really supportive of basically basically everything that, that the government have done. Now, judging the public's behaviour and how well they adhere to those rules is significantly more difficult. Um, and there isn't, there are, you know, always overwhelming evidence to say that the public do follow the restrictions to the letter of the law. But I, it would not shock me one bit based on previous evidence to say that the public would end up supporting lockdowns and i think that what we you know the, the the major driver for that throughout the whole pandemic ever since march 2020 has been saving lives over any kind of you know reduction in freedom i um, you know, i think you described sort of lockdowns as, as draconian earlier and i think that if the government narrative again is we must do this to save lives the public will probably be on board again and, and at risk of upsetting the liberal arty um most people who've had the two jabs now the boosters would be more than happy to, to show evidence of that. Uh, the, the issue of COVID passports always gets people riled up, doesn't it? It does seem to, yeah. And I think, yeah, as, as, you, as you say, I think there is a, a section of society that, that obviously takes, takes their freedoms very seriously. And I think that's completely understood and, 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 and fair enough. But I think you know, what the government are probably asking the public to do, the public don't see it as a massive deal. And especially, as you say, Simon, those that have, already had their, their vaccinations it isn't a massive um it, they don't have to go hugely out of their way to prove that they've ha to prove that they've had them so again i think if the government were to go down were to go down those routes um for, for you know for, for more events and, and more things you know, i think they would possibly you know you'd like to think that maybe it wouldn't be entering the supermarket but perhaps that would be you know where the public kind of had the tipping point if it was impacting their everyday lives beyond just going to a concert or a sporting event then maybe maybe that's where where things would change and the uh, opinion would would start to shift the other way. Okay, well, it's really good to see you, Chris. Thanks very much for joining us this morning.